recipes for technical trading success in Cook's Kitchen. Do you need a reason to be cautious on this market? Well, I'm going to give you six of them, my six top reasons why this market should not make new highs in Q4. Now, maybe that, that sort of cautious pessimism has been what's driven this rally up to nearly S&P 2100. But my call is that we need to make another trip down below S&P 2000. And I'm going to give you my top six reasons right now. All right, this is what I showed my market timers uh, earlier in the week, uh, just putting together six ideas that are very interrelated, and we're going to go into detail on a couple of them. Um, so before the Fed did not hike this week, um, I, I started calling them the too scared to hike Fed. And the idea was that the, their decision not to raise rates was, was well priced in. So I thought the market could only go lower. Um, next, we're going to talk about the current earnings recession and why it will get worse. We'll also talk about the U.S. dollar and the ECB, which ties in to, uh, to the Fed and earnings. Um, and then, you know, here's a good point. Number four, S&P 2050 is 17 times next year's $120 EPS estimate. So $120 bucks is, is actually high for where uh, most of the street is at on next year's S&P earnings. And you remember Goldman Sachs in late September helped put a bottom in the market when they came out and took down their estimate for 2016 from $126 to $120. Uh, and lowered their price target for this year to S&P 2000. Now, uh, a lot of people think, oh, these calls, you know, the big banks just make them so they can, you know, buy stocks cheaper. Well, uh, David Costin, uh, who is the uh, chief equity strategist and economist at Goldman Sachs, he's, he nailed this market for 2015. In fact, you know, uh, almost a year ago in December of 2014, he was extremely cautious, lowering estimates, lowering his price target, and saying that 2015 would just be a big sideways year. And I, you know, he, he nailed that call. So uh, I think it pays to listen to him now. All right, back to our list here. Uh, number five, the oil patch could get uglier. That's also another Goldman Sachs call, but it's one I believe that oil could go lower and that we haven't seen all the bankruptcies that could come out of, of the fracking uh, patch. Uh, of, of the oil industry. And number six, the economy has little upside risk. I'll explain what that means uh, after we talk about earnings. So let's go to uh, one of my favorite charts. This is from uh, our director of research, Shiraz Mian. He publishes this you know, every, every earnings season. He tracks what is the evolution of estimates. So what you are looking at, if you go all the way over here to the left, in the middle of September, uh, Earnings estimates for the fourth quarter were looking at minus 1.1% growth, if you can call that growth. <laughs> Negative growth of minus one point. And, and here's the evolution. As the weeks ticked by, what happened to Q4 estimates? Uh, they just kept going down. And look at this dramatic drop just in the past two weeks from minus 4.8% growth uh, on October 14th to this is, this is as of yesterday, minus 6.6% growth on October 28th. Um, so this is the one of the things that worries me at, with a market that's now back up to trading at 17 times forward while estimates are dropping. I mean, pretty soon it's going to be trading at 18 times forward if this keeps up. Um, so we're in the middle of Q3 earnings season. I really thought the stock market would go lower and then before earnings season got you know, really uh, in the thick of it. And, you know, then we'd bounce up and we saw things weren't so bad. Hey, things aren't so bad in Q3 earnings season. Obviously, you know, uh, big tech is leading the way. But what, let's look ahead. What's going on with Q4? This is the ugly picture for Q4. And, uh, and who knows? It could get worse. You know, and this is part of the, the guidance, say, from a Walmart. Um, it's also a big energy component. I'm not going to, you know, we, we always need to address that, that, the, the bulk of this is energy, but the question I keep asking is, hey, oil hasn't gone that much lower in the past six months, and so why is it taking so long? You know, why do we keep having uh, downward earnings estimate revisions for energy? You know, when does that game end? 
and it spilled over into the industrials too. So you've seen that the, the, the big contributors are energy, industrials, and financials because, hey, uh, who wasn't pricing in higher interest rates six months ago and thinking that that you know, n steepening yield curve would help the net interest margin of banks? Not so much, right? All right. Uh, another great chart from Shiraz, and you should uh, you know, check in on the homepage and see his report. His, uh, his earnings analysis reports are, are free on the homepage at Zacks.com. And in the, in the thick of earnings season, he's updating these things you know, every two, three days. Um, so a lot of real-time analysis, uh, and, then, you know, and then he updates these charts, which are, which are tracking what's going on. So here's the, the earnings outlook going into 2016 that makes me cautious, if not bearish. So we talked about the negative 6.6% growth for Q4, and that's that right there. Um, here's your, you know, your actual negative growth for the second quarter. Here's your evolving negative growth for Q3, which, you know, isn't going to get much better. It's not going to go positive, and it could get worse um, once the next third of the S&P is, is in the bag. Uh, but there's your earnings recession, and it ain't getting any better, right? Now, so let's fast forward to, to the first quarter. Oh, it looks like things are getting better in the first quarter, right? And in the second quarter, and in the third quarter. But remember, these are all estimates. And I think these estimates are in jeopardy of going lower, not higher. Uh, and why would I say that? Well, one factor you have driving is that the dollar is only going to get stronger here. Um, the ECB announced last week that they've got more QE on the table, and it, it might launch in December. And the Fed seems like they're probably going to hike uh, in December. So that's only going to make the dollar stronger. That's not going to help exporters and multinationals. So I don't see how these earnings estimates, uh, projections for 2016, are going to stay intact. I think they're at risk of going lower. So that buck 20 or 120 bucks for the S&P, uh, that estimate is in jeopardy. So again, we're trading over 17 times here up at S&P 2075. All right. Uh, we'll come back to the earnings picture in a minute. Let's talk about the economy. The economy was my, uh, my final point, that the economy has little upside risk. This is leading indicators. You know, this is a good way to get a broad stroke on the economy. What, you know, what is the general trend? And so since 2012, you know, we got through the correction of 2011, we got, and we got through a lot of political stuff in Washington in 2012. But look at, you know, nice... You know, nice trending upwards here on the economic, the, you know, the forward-looking indicators. Uh, and this is produced by the conference board. So you can look up exactly the, the 10 measurements that go into their LEI index. They call it leading, leading economic index is what they call it for LEI. All right. So, but what's going on here in, you know, the second half of 2015? This thing is just, you know, took a big dive into August, tries to recover, and the last report we got last week on October 22nd, um, it dipped below the zero line again. So what I'm saying is we've lost, you know, we had this nice even trend in what uh, Brian Westbury calls the plow horse economy, or Steve Reitmeister calls the muddle through economy, and, you know, we've lost that steady trend in momentum. So um, yes, we could recover that, but uh, I think there is more downside risk for the economy if things start to really get slower. Not calling for a recession. Um, my recession probability is, has stayed above 20% here for a couple of months, but you know, all it takes is businesses to you know, cut back spending and hiring a little bit, and then you get that, uh, that sort of snowball effect, which you know, uh, pumps up recession fears. All right, so that's our, uh, our snapshot of the economy. Um, oh, here's another snapshot. This is the uh, GDP now from the Atlanta Fed. And, you know, here's the evolution of, uh, of GDP estimates. You know, going back to July, it seemed like the consensus was three and a quarter percent for Q3. Uh, and it was just released this morning. It came, the first look at Q3 GDP came in at 1.7%. Um, so, and, and apparently that was the consensus. So, so I don't know why this is showing the consensus above 2%. Uh, 
Uh, but, you know, it's close enough. The real point is, is that the Atlanta Fed tracks the, uses a lot of data to try and model GDP in real time. And here's where they are right now. Um, you know, in, uh, in late October, they bumped back up above 1%, but not much, 1.1%. And, uh, you know, we, so we just came in at 1.7. So the, the, the main point is that um, just like earnings estimates, the GDP estimates have been consistently too high and always need to get revised lower. So my question is, yeah, the plow horse economy works. We muddle through at 1.5% to 2% growth, and, and it's been great for earnings, um, even, <laughs> uh, even if you take out buybacks, right? But... How long can we go at that pace? I don't think we can stay at that steady pace uh, into a rising rate environment. Now, in the past, you know, wh what does history tell us? Hey, when the Fed starts a hiking cycle, you know, they're, they're not going to invert the yield curve for a couple of years. And, you know, so stocks are still the place to be. And the truth is, is that money is going to remain incredibly cheap. I thought we'd see 1% Fed funds by the first quarter of next year we're barely going to see half of that. So, you know, the, 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 we'll be lucky if the Fed's at 1% uh, in December of next year. So that's good for stocks, rightly so. But can this economy keep, you know, this very slow momentum, or is it at risk? That's the big question you need to ask. All right. So that's my, that's my sort of bearish take. Now let's hear from a smarter economist and uh, equity strategist than myself, uh, Tobias Levkovich from Citigroup, is much more optimistic and he crunches a lot more data. So and the reason I'm showing you his picture, I'm going to show you one of his charts, but I also want you to go to Bloomberg and watch the interview that he did on Wednesday, October 28th. It's a seven minute interview and th they just talk about a lot of great stuff. Um, you know, he really gets a chance to just riff on several, uh, you know, pieces of data that his research team is looking at and he makes some excellent points. I'm going to show you one chart where you know he's saying recession fears are overdone. Here's his uh, he, he says he cringes every time he hears somebody talk about the industrial recession because he just doesn't think it's true. What he thinks is hap was, what has happened is that uh, industrials have had to you know maybe be a little more cautious, maybe warn uh, in bringing down estimates because of the, the spillover from energy and materials. So here's the real look, and he sees an upturn uh, in industrial estimates. You know, this is the other sector that, it, that it's taken the big hit in the past six months to a year, um, and he is, he is not pessimistic on this sector at all. So uh, you want to take a look, find that interview on Bloomberg, Tobias Levkovich, and and watch it seven minutes long uh, from Wednesday, October 28th. Tons of good stuff in there. I'm just going to list some of the stuff to get you to go watch it. So he talks about the energy and materials impact, um, the whole scare about high yield. Well, he thinks that's concentrated in energy, and it's, it's working through. So he's not worried about the bankruptcies that I, that I thought we'd see and how that would spill over in the bond market. He also talks about what's going on in the credit markets for small businesses. And he uses data from the uh, National Federation of Small Business, I think is what it is, NFIB. I I've showed you their, uh, their sort of optimism index before because small businesses have remained optimistic. And, and they're important because they provide so many jobs to our economy. Well, he's, they look at some of the credit and lending data from NFIB. And to them, it's very positive. Uh, small businesses are expanding and not having trouble getting credit. He says in past cycles, you would see the credit crunch hit there, too. Um, all right, he also talks about the Fed. He talks about their quant model for predicting a recession. They, they look at 16 factors. He doesn't list them, but he says only five of them are flashing red right now. So five out of 16, that's why they remain optimistic. And then he also talks about their sentiment model which has nine factors, and he says it's been in panic mode for eight weeks, thus the rally, right? So because he's, their data tells them that in 96% of cases, the market is higher um, after you've, you've settled into a period of panic. So two months of panic, and, and rightly so, that's the rally we've had. 
All right, so check out that interview. Um, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to here. So, you know, will the market go on to make new highs in Q4? It certainly could. Uh, I think the odds are against it, and I think that the market, uh, you know, this has been a rally, a relief rally built on large cap tech um, and, uh, you know, a fair amount of short covering. So the, the path of least resistance to me seems like going back down to S&P 2000. As these earnings estimates are digested, you know, the dollar moves higher, and then they start taking down 2016 estimates more. If that, if that changes, you know, then, uh, then there's no reason the stock market can't surge on because they've got the number one tailwind that a stock market loves, and that's the Fed. All right, I'm Kevin Cook. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen.